I have been struggling with pain for probably 15 years. The pain feels like someone is squeezing my insides so tight that it might burst or like something is trying to scrape its way out from inside of me. My name is Kate. I live in New York City and I'm 37 years old. I have endometriosis and adenomyosis. Endometriosis is essentially the endometrial cells that are supposed to be inside my uterus are all over my abdominal cavity. The easiest way I have found to explain it is like if you think about the inside of a bell pepper, there's all those seeds in there. Endometriosis is if somehow those seeds are just like all over your salad. Who knows how? Um, adenomyosis is if those seeds embedded themselves into the inner lining of the pepper. So like they're supposed to be in the pepper, but they're not supposed to be fused with it. So I have both of those things happening. It's been progressive. So at the beginning, it was, you know, nothing a little bit of ibuprofen couldn't handle. And it's been unbearable for probably seven or eight years. This takes so much of my energy, emotional and physical energy, that I don't have any left for the things that I love. I run an independent theater company called Squeaky Bicycle Productions, and I work in the development division at the National Office of Planned Parenthood. Pain flares hit the brakes on everything. I'm on pause. And during the lead up to a flare, I'm slowed down. I first met Kate about three years ago. Kate would have a pain flare with her period, meaning she would generally be doing okay at her baseline, not having her day-to-day -day routine interrupted too much and managing with her medication regimen. And then around the time of her period, she would have this very heightened uh, increase in pain where she would require stronger pain medications. She would be not able to function due to her pain. My flare is supposed to start in about a week. I am having some cramps, lots of fatigue, migraines, hormonal changes. I know that it's coming. I know that it's just gonna get worse. I'm gonna take a mild muscle relaxer and pretend that this isn't happening. The pain is so bad now on birth control. I know that it's unbearable without birth control. So the idea of having to go off birth control to try to have kids is, it, it, it's not an option. Similarly, we talked about egg retrieval and the medication that that takes also, it's just not worth it. I've actually operated on Kate uh, two times. She had had a prior laparoscopy where it was found that she had endometriosis and she had very short-lived pain relief from that surgery. There are a few things that really kind of govern how I think about treating people for pain management. So one, I'm, I'm pretty conservative and really try to do things in a stepwise fashion. And so that means, you know, starting with simple things first. And many times for, for people who have, you know, less severe pain, we'll start with just rescue medicines um, and see how they do with that. So this is what I wake up to every morning. It's Friday morning today. So I'm going to take these. Now, if somebody's coming in with, you know, persistent daily pain or pain that's really difficult to control with rescue medicines, then we really take a harder look at the preventative medication therapy. And um, in Kate's case, she came in with such a bad flare the first time that I met her that I knew that we were going to need to kind of attack things from both categories rather than just starting with the rescue medicines. We have tried lots of treatments. We've tried multiple surgeries. And so now, uh, in order to hopefully finally stop the pain, we are doing a hysterectomy. A hysterectomy means to remove the uterus and sometimes the cervix as well as the fallopian tubes, depending on the procedure. I present to you the uterus eviction day countdown. Hashtag yeet the ute. I am obsessed. I think it seems extreme, but when it came down to it, there's not really anything else we can do. 
Okay. Flare is happening for real now. There's nothing I can do right now. That's the worst part. It's 1.30 a.m. It's two and a half hours since my last meds. I don't really know what to do. It's a really emotional thing. It's not fair. It's not fair that that I can't devote the kind of time I want to my to my artistic career, to the art that I want to be creating in the world. So I'm cooking right now and I just had this like wave of pain. Take a look at my very messy room. I can't clean my apartment. I can't cook food. I can't do things that are just regular life because this is ever present. Even if I keep having some fatigue and some cramps because we're, we're leaving my ovaries in, even if all this does is it stops the now five days a month of severe pain during the like true pain flare, what a miracle. I'm ready to evict this uterus. I'm really lucky to have a really great family of friends that are there for me. My mom came to help with my first two surgeries. We're asking her not to come this time because I don't want her to risk getting in a plane during COVID. But I have two friends who are ready to join me at the hospital if they can. I turn to them, you know, those few people who I let see. Um, and because I know that they're not going to, to judge me about it. Hi, I am currently on my way to the pharmacy to pick up the medication that I'm out of. I absolutely was terrified when COVID started. And as someone with chronic pain, I had a lot of visits with doctors. I was getting trigger point injections in my back. I got uh, Botox to treat migraines. I get acupuncture. I see a chiropractor. We had to cancel so many procedures. I ended up deciding to do this during COVID. We didn't know how long it would be. And then they called me to set it up and they couldn't set it up until six months later. I'm so afraid that we're going to do the surgery. And then we're going to find out that the actual problem is my ovaries and, and that means that the surgery is not actually the end. This surgery, assuming that it is successful in the ways that we expect, is going to save my life. It's going to remove a black hole that has been living inside of me that is sucking all of my emotional and physical energy and it'll let me use that to live my life. Here we are. It's the morning of surgery. It is really happening. For the first time it feels real. Um, I wasn't sure we were gonna actually make it. <laughs> Dr. Davison is an expert and my life is about to change. All right. Happening. I'm ready. I want it to be happening right now. This surgery typically takes a few hours. It depends on the level of uh, endometriosis that we might encounter. For Kate, she had significant scarring and endometriosis that had regrown. And so the surgery was a little bit more complex than if there had not been additional endometriosis in that short period of time and scarring. I did it. It was a very long day. I'm so happy. And now I'm going to go home and go to bed. The end. Getting home after surgery and, and having, you know, my first couple days of recovery, it was was exhausted more than anything. I was in 
a lot of pain. I'm about four weeks out from surgery. I definitely still need some physical accommodations. The pain is much, much lower. My anxiety levels and, and hormone levels are kind of all over the place. I feel better. And this feels like a lot of work. I'm back at work and so everyone's like, you're great now, right? Are you fine? Are you better? And And it's a lot longer road than that. But I think that I've gone through what would have been a pain flare before and the pain's almost non-existent. So I think we got it. I'm trying to be really careful um, because I definitely am still healing, but I feel already like I have the energy to do so many things I've been putting off. I feel like my work is gonna be able to to just improve and grow. It just feels like the world has opened up in front of me.